Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, another episode of the Unlaced Podcast. Thank you for coming along. If you are new here, please give us a like and subscribe. And if you've come back again, as I always say, I absolutely love you. I know I did have a week off last week. I'm going to tell you now, I had the death virus. I don't know if I was coming back to earth or if I was going back to sleep, but uh, for a good few days, I was looking Satan dead in the eyes and I wish that upon no one, but I appreciate your patience. I appreciate this man's patience as well, because we had to push this episode back, but had to get some AFL players on and Carlton are absolutely flying at the moment and so is this man in Nick Newman. So Nick, mate, welcome to the show. Thanks, mate. It's good to be here. Your first podcast or you've done, you've done them before? Yeah, no, I think this is my first podcast. Yeah, I've obviously done a bit of media um, through footy, but yeah, not, no podcast. <laughs> Day uh, well, as of, as since we're, the time we're doing this one, I think you guys are three wins and a draw, which is a, a pretty good start. I mean, one of the best in Carlton's last 15, 20 years maybe. So it must be a good time to be around the club. Uh, yeah, it is. I think um, I think it's the best start since 95. When, 95, when we that's on right. The flag, so hopefully that's a good omen. <laughs> yeah. um, or not, but we'll see. Um, but yeah, we're, we're going all right, mate. Yeah, yeah. We're going all right. It's a long year, but yeah, it's a good start. If you Did you feel like the, the building blocks for success with Carlton had been in motion well before this year? I know last year you guys had a pretty competitive year and fell a bit short of finals, but overall have you kind of seen the trajectory of the club moving forward? Um, oh, I, I think so. It's been hard. Like My first four years at the club I had three different coaches, so yeah. um, it's probably been hard to look too far ahead at times. Um, yeah, I think like vossi has been amazing since he's come in and um, even when I first got there, I always thought we had the talent. Like you look at Harry and, and Charlie and Cripper and Walshy, like Weeders, like this goes on. We've got, we've got some pretty good players. So I always felt like um, we had the pieces there. It was just about trying to gel and, and put it together. And um, yeah, like, well, we've got a long way to go still. Um, yeah. Bossy's done a pretty good job of, um, yeah, making us gel a bit better. How I've, I've been through that situation before actually where I think I had like five coaches in three years and as a young player particularly, I mean, you might've been a little bit older to handle a bit better, but I had no idea what was going on. I was like, I found it so hard to constantly keep changing to fit sort of the coaches. And when you get to the professional level, if you don't do what the coach wants, you won't play. So you've got to actually kind of implement everything they're saying. Is that, did you find that challenging? Like, is that, I assume that lack of stability sometimes never helps. Yeah, yeah, I did. Um, and even though I was a bit older, like I'd, I'd come from Sydney, who one of the most probably stable clubs in the comp. Um, Horse has been there, I don't know how long. Yeah. Um, and been a pretty successful club. So then when I got to Carl in my first year, I think um, Bolt got sacked maybe around seven. Um, so even though I was a little bit older, it was still all new to me. And, um, mm. and the pressure and the hype around Carlton, it was just like, it was, it was pretty overwhelming actually. I was just like, Jesus, <laughs> you realize how big footy is in Melbourne and especially Carlton. Um, and then, yeah, like the challenge of new coach, new set of eyes, you got to impress, um, coaches of human beings. So they're always going to have bias towards certain players and like certain players. So, mm. um, yeah, that, that's been a little bit of a challenge is you feel like you're constantly having to sort of prove yourself and, um, yeah, but I suppose like for me, it's probably been a good thing. Um, mm. It's just sort of it doesn't let you get too complacent. So um, yeah, I think there's some some positives around that. But yeah, it was a uh, rough start. So hopefully, Ossie's here for a while. Yeah, I reckon he will be. I th I think you know what you mentioned it there made me think of it. I remember going into training with all these new coaches and stuff. Like every training session was almost like a bit of a final in a mm. sense because you're like shit. You need to turn up every day. Like you need to. You start no matter who you are. You kind of start from the ground floor because they even look at you from like your character traits, like how you prepare, all these little things. And you've got to like re-switch onto it in a, in a sense because you kind of get out of this autonomous phase of what you're used to with a previous coach. So yeah, no, it's, it's, yeah, it is a challenge. Like we had, when Vossi came, we had a whole new group of line coaches as well. So it's not just one head coach. It's, yeah. um, you know, we had five different coaches and so you got to make sure you come back from preseason in really good <laughs> nick. Like you don't want to come back um, and, and get off on the wrong foot. So um, yeah. It was a little bit of a challenge, but it's probably helped me in good stead. Yeah, well, you, you're you playing – did you say you're playing some of your best footy or are you enjoying your footy the most this year? Because you seem, you're you always in the sort of – mate, you're great for fantasy points. <laughs> Absolutely <laughs> outstanding. That's just because I kick yeah. and I don't handball much. Yeah, yeah, get Nick Newman in your fantasy <laughs> team, everyone, or super coach because uh, they're flying at the moment, mate. You're doing really well. Yeah, I, I don't know. I feel like I'm just playing good, solid footy at the moment. Um, Vossi's been great for me. I think um, – I sort of had to probably change my game a bit. I was 
especially when I first got drafted, I was probably more worried about how many kicks and handballs I was getting and um, not too much defending. So uh, I sort of realised I, I probably had to change if I wanted to stay in the system for a while. And I feel like the last couple of years I've been able to probably have a better balance in my game of attacking and, and mm-hmm. still using my what I what I think is my strength in, set, in terms of um, sort of my skills, but still being able to defend and um, – yeah, like I feel like I'm in a good groove at the moment where I know what works for me and how to prepare. And um, I'm playing some good solid footy, but at my age, you'd hope you've sort of half <laughs> figured out how to prepare. Yeah, well, that's true. Because hey, are, you, are you just playing off the half back? Or are you playing deeper at back pocket at all or anything like that? Yeah, I'm playing a little bit bit of both. Um, I think probably, the half back flank at Carlton's like, it's not an easy position to get yeah. in the starting 22. When you na- would, I didn't realize how many good plays you have off the half back. Yeah. Um, or can play half back. Yeah. So it's a compliment to you. Yeah. I, like, I think that was sort of part of me changing my game a little bit. I realised that we've got an All-Australian, Sam Doherty, another All-Australian in, in Adam Saar. We've got Zach Williams, who <laughs> unfortunately is out injured. But um, yeah, we've got some pretty quality players at half Seriously, back. And so for me, I probably had to change my game a little bit um, to, to be a little bit deeper and be able to defend. And um, yeah, like some weeks I've got a, a specific role on players and, in some weeks, I play a bit more freer, but um, yeah, I think the last couple of years have definitely been a bit more of a defender and, and had some roles on guys, which I didn't do in my yeah. early parts of the career. Yeah, well, the one of the reasons I was excited to get you on the show, and we did mention it before we jumped on, was the backdoor entry into the AFL in a sense, or what I imagined was a pretty surreal journey in, in regards to coming into the AFL. I think you're turning almost 22 yep. in what's 2015. You would have come on the whole rookie list at Sydney, was yep. it? Yeah. So first. yeah. When like, a, obviously you missed the draft. Was that expected or were you gutted at that point or what was sort of um, the journey back then? Yeah. So I, I had a bit of a different journey to most other guys, which, um, yeah, I'm sort of pretty grateful for now. Um, yeah, I, I was never in any, um, stingrays or, TSC Cup, so I was just playing local footy under 18s for Mornington, and um, like I was a long way off playing AFL. I sort of didn't even think it would probably be possible at that age. Um, and where I was, just playing local footy, um, and I was under 18s, and my brother was actually uh, under 17s, and so he was playing in eight, under 18s with me. So that was pretty cool. And uh, we played a grand final when I was top age 18s, and my brother was bottom age, and the Stingrays just came to watch. And um, they came to watch my brother and uh, I played all right. So they invited <laughs> us both down and they had like an under nines um, rule where you could have four or five 19-year-olds. Oh, right. And um, so I got invited down and um, I had a year at Stingrays and uh, that was sort of when I thought like I might, I might be able to potentially make it. And I had a little bit of interest. I, I went to the state combine, which is um, just like a one-day thing and it means like you get, sort of have a few clubs interested and um, – yeah, I had a few interviews with different clubs, and um, but yeah, I, di- I didn't get drafted. Um, and then after that, my brother stayed at Frank uh, at uh, Stingrays, and I went to Franks and Dolphins because um, during that year I played a couple of games with them. And uh, uh, back then they had the seniors in VFL, but they also had the development league, which is like um, VFL reserves. Yeah, and so. Um, yeah, first year out of Stingrays and went to Franks and I just played development league the whole year. So I was sort of in the VFL twos. Wow. Um, so once again, I felt a fair way off playing AFL. And um, yeah, towards the back end of that year, I was a half forward. So um, I sort of thought, geez, I might as well just have a go down back. Like yeah. I'm not doing much up forward. <laughs> um, so I went down back and I played all right and I got a bit of the ball. And and then that off season, I was sort of like – I was pretty much going to go back to my local club. Um, like I met morning to my local club, which I still love and got a strong connection there. And yeah, I was just going to go back and get a bit of cash and, and play local footy. And my mum was, was the one that was like, what are you doing? Like you, you're 21 um, or you're 20, like just give it another year. And I was like, yeah, you fuck probably great advice. Oh man. yeah. Mum, mum's been, um, yeah, voice of reason for me my whole life. And um, <laughs> yeah, she probably saw a bit more of potential in me than, than I did. And, um, yeah, she sort of gently, but not so gently encouraged me to just give it another go. And, um, yeah. And then I went to Frankston and had a good preseason and played down back the whole year and, um, was in the senior team and, um, yeah, lucky enough to play right. And then Sydney picked me up and, um, yeah, it was, it's been a pretty cool journey. Mate, it's a pretty ballsy tactic to like go after AFL 
when you're sort of early 20s, don't you think? Because I reckon the percentage chances of bloke getting picked up are much thinner now because obviously the, the draft pool is so talented too and obviously the trade period and things like that. So it kind of seems like you have to kind of be a bit of a superstar outside of the outside of sort of the AFL sort of um, – structure to get picked up so that's that's why i think it's pretty amazing for you from your like i think of the mental perspective most blokes would have given up if, if that makes sense yeah I, I don't know like maybe i was a bit naive and young and, and just kept playing i don't know has that changed more now even from when you got rookie drafted do you do you find that still that uh, sort of market is still looked at by afl clubs yeah i, I guess think it, i think it is still looked at um it's good because i mean there's so much talent yeah. there it's just it seems like it's not the, the right route like they don't seem yeah. to look at it as much as they probably should yeah i don't know i think um there's been plenty of guys that have got drafted as mature age, even though you're only <laughs> 21 or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, still a kid. You know, I wasn't mature. No, I hate that term, right. mature yeah, age. So, oh, I was going to use that today, so I'm like, I don't think that's right nah. for you because you're like 21. <laughs> I, was not, I was not mature. I was yeah. very immature. But, um, yeah, I don't know. Like, it's sort of felt like it's maybe even gone in some phases where there's a few years where quite a few mature age guys got picked up and then gone away from it a little bit. But, um, yeah, that opportunity is still there. Um a lot of guys. The, the the problem I find is that guys that are really talented that um, miss out on a draft or whatever, um, they often get back to local footy because they they get paid like really well. Yeah. Playing, like so, guys like you can get paid double, triple what you get playing VFL to play local footy. So it's really hard for guys to turn that back. Yeah. And bet on themselves and um, especially like see guys have young families or work and business. It's like. You got to um, do it almost, don't you? Yeah, it's like it's got to cash in. Yeah, so the VFL, um, you know, doesn't pay often nearly as well as um, what guys can get at local footy. So I feel like that turns turns some guys off. But yeah, um, it's definitely still a path, and I think we've seen that um, even in recent years. Guys that um, play VFL, like someone like John Newcomb, um, yeah. he was playing VFL for Box Hill, and um, yeah, it's crazy. The Saints captain at the moment, Callum Wilkie. Cal he's, he's a great, like, he's great example. Probably one of the best, could yeah. be an All-Australian like, yeah. you know, defender yeah, this year. Like, yeah, yeah, it's yeah, like he, um, we picked him up. I think his nickname's The Accountant. Yeah, 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 yeah. I've heard that. <laughs> Which is like, do you know what I mean? Doing, yeah. But he's like our best defender. Yeah. And I'm like, well, there's obviously some logic there to keep yeah. looking at these players because he's made a huge difference. I'm sure that's one of many examples. Oh, there's heaps in of the them. System. And, yeah, I think they offer value in different ways as well. Like, um, while Cal Wilkie's... I'm sure given on-field value, I'm sure he's given lots of off-field value in terms of giving some perspective yeah. to guys about what the world is outside of footy for guys. So I think- um, Were you working before Sydney came knocking? Yeah, I, was, I did a few different things, mate. I had no, I had no idea what I wanted <laughs> yeah. to do. So like- I imagine. I did. Um, I, did a, I dropped out of school year 11, did a landscaping apprenticeship for a year and a half. Yeah. Um, so yeah, like- People think playing footy is hard, like landscaping apprenticeship as a seventeen-year-old. Like I was catching the bus to work and just on the end of it, of a barrow and shovel all day. So that was pretty tough. Um, that puts then, hairs on your chest. That oh mate, <laughs> it didn't for me. I was still a skinny little kid, but um, yeah, it was tough work. And then I did, yeah, I did a bit of carpentry. My stepdad, um, and then I worked for like a construction fastening company delivering um, Fuck. nuts and bolts and stuff in the city. So, um. Yeah, I, d- I did a few things because I just had no idea what I wanted to do and just lucky enough that, um, yeah, I found my way into footy and, um, yeah, feel pretty blessed. Before we get into the footy journey of in the AFL, like do you think that sort of upbringing in a way, like what, now you're 30 years old and you've you've stayed in the system and you're getting obviously success, like do you, do you attest any of your success to that sort of tough initiation to get into the AFL, like working and obviously coming through the back door? Do you think that's actually – helped you to sort of maintain and stay at the level of, yeah. of AFL? Yeah, absolutely. Um, don't even have to think twice about that. I think um, – What do you reckon it is? Like what, what for you, if you could pinpoint why that helps? <sighs> oh, for me, it's just like – it sort of teaches you resilience and persistence and I think that's an underrated um, trait in AFL. It's like I play with a lot of guys. Um, I'm in my ninth year and I've, I've seen lots of guys come through and go. And um, Playing AFL is – it's not easy. Like I know, I was saying, like I'd much prefer to do it than been, on, mm. been doing landscaping, and I stand by that. It's a it's a great job, but um, there's a lot of highs and lows, and um, it can be a roller coaster at times. So, um, the ability to be resilient 
um, keep showing up every day, keep trying to get better, keep, keep being persistent in what you're doing. Um, I feel like that's an underrated quote, uh, underrated value in, um, in playing footy and yeah. being out of the game. It really taught me that. And, um, and then just having some gratitude, like I get to rock up with 40 of my mates every day and um, like an unreal, like it's, it? it's a, put on like, boots. Oh man. And like, <laughs> like I, I want to stay in footy when I'm, when I'm finished yeah. in terms of coaching or some management or whatever it looks like. But I, I just love the, the environment a footy club brings. And, um, I feel like being able to do some different things in, in different workplaces, you, you have an understanding of how special a footy club environment is. Yeah. I've actually heard this about you. No, I don't even know how I heard this. <laughs> this is well yeah. before, but I heard you're a, a, a huge clubman. Like a great clubman. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't know what that means. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> like a, like give yeah, out a good award. bloke around the yeah, club. Yeah. Or like, but are you actively doing things inside the club as well? Like extra, you know, I don't know if curricular activities is the right term, <laughs> but that's kind of what I was leading towards. Like um, doing, doing extra things just because you enjoy it more so than like, like I heard you were, you were working with the women's footy team and stuff like that as well. Yeah. Yeah. Look, I, I do like to think and pride myself on, someone that, that is a good person around the club and, and helps others. And, um, yeah, like I've got an interest in, in coaching and development coaching. So I love helping out young guys and, um, yeah, having a bit of banter with them. They, they keep me feeling fresh and young, but, um, yeah, like I'm, I'm just grateful to be at a footy club and Carlton gave me an opportunity when I, when I finished at Sydney. So, um, yeah, I just, as I said, I love being around, around footy clubs and the environment it brings and, um, in terms of the coaching, like I, I got an interest in that post career, so um, I had an opportunity to coach the back line for the AFLW, and that's awesome. Did that for a couple of seasons, and um, yeah, that was an awesome, awesome experience. And yeah. um, I'm still a little bit involved, obviously, there in their off season at the moment. Yeah, but, um, yeah, did a bit of that the last couple of seasons, and really enjoyable. So. Um, yeah, I don't. It's clubman. Oh, mate, that's what I got told. Throw, I didn't just, even know you. It's an award they throw <laughs> out. But, um, yeah. I think it's just you're just not a bad bloke. Oh, yeah. You're, you're not an mate, idiot. Mate, <laughs> I reckon like if you look at uh, like a footy club as a company, it's like one of the hardest places to work because your everyone's mood and so forth is um, challenged by results. So if you're winning, it's a good place to be. If you're losing, not even like admin and some of the staff, yeah, yeah. like you can't all be up and about because yeah. you're losing. So it's like a real, so to be a good, like that's why I think um, athletes, AFL or in general sporting athletes in team sports are like, you have good emotional intelligence because fucking like when you go into working landscaping, like pretty much everyone's the same every day because you can fuck up on the job site, but you're not in the paper and yeah. you know, all that sort of stuff. So yeah. Uh, it's, yeah, it's, yeah, it's, that's the, the tough part of the industry. Yeah, the it highs is. and lows, but, um, yeah. That's why you need good culture and good people in the club because, uh, yeah, it's not always going to be smooth sailing. But just to go into the Sydney Swans, um, 2015, you got rookie drafted there, yep. which obviously one would have been, how good is this? Finally on an AFL list yep. in a sense. But did you, did you know you were going to be going there? Did you have an inkling um, or was it all kind of nah, up in the air? And Nah, I had no idea I was going with the Swans. So oh, it's a bit, bit of a funny story, but um, I've, as I said, when I had that year at Stingrays, I had a bit of interest and um, they showed some interest in me then and I had a couple of interviews with them and then um, I was actually had an interview that their recruiting office I don't know if it still is, but it was based out of um, MSAC up in the city. Oh, really? Um, yeah, That's because all Melbourne. the- f- yeah, because all the footy is down in Victoria, it sort of didn't make sense for him to be based out of Victoria, uh, right. based out of New South Wales. So right. um, I had an, an interview with him, I can't, oh, it would have been 10 or 11 a.m. And um, I was driving up there and I was about, I was probably only 10 minutes away. I think I was on maybe Inkerman Street or something in St Kilda. I wasn't far away and I was just stressed, you know, I'm going up there. I was in an interview in the AFL club, just don't stuff up. And I was daydreaming and I just, this car stopped in front of me and I smashed straight into the back of it. Like no. I, I wrote my car off. My, oh my, no. My, um, the front of my car, like was up in my windscreen. I couldn't see. Um, and so my dad, um, is a sales rep. So he's out on the road. So I just rang him. I'm just like, dad, like I've just smashed my car. Like, um, and I've got this interview in five minutes, swans. And dad's like, all right, I'll race it. I'll be there in like 20 minutes. So uh, I had to ring them and just say like, yeah, sorry, I'm going to be late. Like I've just ridden my car off and I'm thinking they're just, they're just, just going to think I'm bullshitting <laughs> and I'm just running late and I'm just like, far out. Holy like, crap. Stuff this up. So then dad gets there and he's just like, go. So I just jumped in a cab and 
went and he sorted my car out. So then I, I was, I was already a bit flustered, let alone after Fuck that. And then, um, yeah, so I probably butchered my interview and then they didn't draft me, which is probably fair <laughs> enough. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then, yeah, like two years later, I just was at the state combine. I ran into a couple of them just walking past and said hi. And that was the only conversation I had with them that year since the two years prior. Um, I had lots of chats with Freo and some other clubs, but I, I literally didn't really speak to Swans at all that year. And then they picked me in the rookie draft. So I had no idea I was going to what Sydney. What the heck? Yeah, I thought that was after the start I had. Yeah. So did they end up telling you why they picked you up when you got there? Like, did you, did you sort of follow that up? Like, yeah, I crashed my car and then yeah, you know, uh, speak to me. Like, so did you ask that? One of the recruiters at Sydney is now, um, at Carlton. Right. Um, Mickey Gresser and, um, yeah, he said they believe. He said like, "No, nah, we genuinely believed you that you crashed your car." It's a pretty, pretty big like lie, if you will. Yeah, you know what I mean. Like, it's you, you wouldn't think make of better that up. excuses. <laughs> yeah, I think. yeah but, exactly. Um, yeah, so he said they believe me and stuff, and then um, yeah, a couple of years later they picked me up, and um, yeah, don't don't know. It was just yeah, one mate. Of I hold Sydney Swans in such high esteem, like as a football club, just obviously because yeah. they're always in the finals. They're always can like competitive. Their list changes over 10 years, but they're still kind of the same yeah. team and same fold. Like for you, when you walked in there, did you realize how good of a culture and footy club you were walking into? I don't think so. No, I think um, like the, I knew that a, a good footy team, they'd um, been playing in finals and grand finals before I got there. Um, and so I knew, I knew the, the, the quality that was there. I didn't probably have an idea. I don't think anyone really does of the, the culture unless you're in there and you're involved in it. Um, and then even while I was there, I, I felt like I got an understanding of it, but I think um, as time passes, I realised like how lucky I was to get drafted to a footy club with such strong culture and the lessons it taught me. And um, it's definitely part of the reason that I'm still in an AFL club now. And um, yeah, like the, the, the leaders I had when I got there was like, Jared McVeigh, Josh Kennedy, Kieran Jack, like they were just yeah, amazing leaders. Players. Yeah, amazing. So um, I got to learn off some pretty cool, cool guys and amazing leaders. And um, yeah, it's it definitely taught me some valuable lessons being up there. What do you what what makes them so consistent and competitive? Do you think having insight because it's obviously you see certain teams and now it's probably a little bit different because you can go from the bottom to the top pretty quickly, as mm. we've seen, but. A lot of teams kind of go back down, take yeah. their time to reap. Like Swans just constantly, same with like Geelong. Yeah. They're just always sort of churning at the top. Yeah, I think, um, I don't know, it's, it's a hard one to put your finger on. I think they do a great job of developing their young players. I think mm. um, that plays a role. And um, even when they're successful, they still seem to be able to blood a couple of young guys every mm. year and still keep an eye on development while trying to be successful um, at that present time. Um, but a, a big one I do think is the culture. Like, And it's hard to replicate because um, like you come to Melbourne, when I came to Carlton, one of the things I realised is that everyone, so many guys at Melbourne footy clubs have other friends, family members um, down here. So instead of when you leave a club, a lot of guys go and do their own thing and like totally fair enough. But um, up at Sydney, like I got drafted there, I knew no one in Sydney. Yeah. Um, so all my time was just spent hanging out with the boys. So you become so close with each other. Right. Um, and because, you know, 90% of the players up there are interstate um, and they've got a housing program. So you get, you move in with a couple of young guys and we, there's three or four houses oh, all in the same area. Really so you're always hanging out with each other. Um, so yeah, that, that, that definitely helps the culture. What, um, what for you, this, I, I'm interested because you would have come in at obviously 21, 22. I still class that as a kid. Now we're 30. Yep. You kind of still realize how young that is. But yeah. at the time you probably feel a little bit older than you are. But what was the biggest eye opener for you coming into an AFL setup or AFL in general, like playing at the highest level for you? Um, oh, a, a big eye opener for me was, um, like how hard it is to, to get a game and, and, I was at Sydney, so it was probably the, the higher end of, of um, difficulty to get they a game. They just playing in grand finals. But they, did they yeah. lose a grand final around they that lost time? 2014. Yeah, they. And then they, I got there 20 for that 2015 season. Then they, I didn't Bulldogs, play my first lost. two years. Yeah. So then they lost against the Bulldogs. In but so you were your first two years, they were they were fighting for a flag. Really? Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. Well, it was Bulldogs grand finals 2016, 16, wasn't it? Yeah. yeah, yeah. So my first two years. Um, yeah, like it was just – they had like Nick Smith, All-Australian, Heath Grundy, 
Jared McVay, and then like Callum Mills came in my second year and oh, played yeah. half back. Like it's they had an amazing game. back line. Like Dane Rampey was there. That's um, right. Like it was it was going to be pretty hard to get in. So, but at the time you get drafted and you think like, oh yeah, like I'll just get in halfway through the year or whatever. And um, so that was a big eye opener for me. It was like it takes like you you get drafted and you think you sort of I made it, but you think like, oh yeah, sweet, I'm in. But like the hard work literally, and I know everyone says it, but it's true. It's like that's when the actual hard work yeah. starts. Like the, the challenge to try and get a game. Like it took me till my third, start of my third year to get a game. And um, like I was playing some, especially that my first year at Sydney was yeah, not ideal. Second year, I played some great footy in the reserves and I was a rookie and you couldn't get um, picked unless you got upgraded then either. Right. So like someone to, needs to get injured. Someone also. needs to get injured. So like. I had a couple other guys that were rookies that got upgraded in front of me and I was playing really well in the two. So like even the challenge of just being able to continually grind and get better and, and work to get a game. So that was probably the biggest challenge for me um, coming into an AFL system. Yeah, I reckon that's the hardest part. Hard, outside of being injured, that's probably the hardest position at a footy club to be in. Yep. Having to play consistently well in the twos yep. on a rookie list where you're dependent on your mate getting injured. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's it's really weird. Yeah, it's a strange position to be in. And um, I've been dropped plenty of times and played a lot of, like, knee forward is, played a lot of knee for footy. And, um, yeah, it's re- it, it is a really challenging. I think they're so important to your footy club, those guys, because they affect the mood of the club so much. And um, yeah. if you've got guys that are on the fringe and um, or in the twos and they're just positive and, and mm-hmm. keep working hard, like, it's amazing how that, filters through the group because it's like if these guys are busting their ass and having a great attitude, um, yeah, you, you, you can't sit there and be sulking if you're in the team or yeah. you're a young kid just finding your feet. So, um, yeah, th- that is a really challenging part of playing AFL that probably gets swept under the carpet a bit. That's well said. I, I never, never would have thought of that actually. Hey guys, just a quick break in this episode to share that I have partnered with Dabble, the gambling agency. Dabble is an incredible platform. It's similar to Instagram where you can copy uh, bets off some of the absolute superstars of various games. It's absolutely awesome. Please make sure you do gamble responsibly, only bet what you can. And also big, big news for the next 12 months, I'm going to be doing a Tuesday stream between 7 and 8 p.m. where I'm going to be talking all sports, putting on bets with you guys and having absolute fun. You can find that within the Double app and it's there, as I said, every Tuesday night, 7 to 8 p.m., the Jake Barkadesh live show. Make sure we see you there and we'll get back into the episode. I have to ask you because that is, I mean, Michael Jordan, but what, what was it like playing with Buddy? Like in regards to like how, how big is he in regards to stature and just like presence on a footy field? And cause everyone, obviously when you go watch Sydney, yep. even around Melbourne, you kind of got always just watching Buddy and what he's doing. Yeah. It's yeah, pretty weird. Um, yeah. Like when I first got drafted and you walk in and you sit and a few seats up from him in your locker room, you sort of pinch yourself. You're like, this is pretty crazy. Yeah. Um, and yeah, he, like obviously he's, he's a pretty pretty big, um, he's massive as well. Yeah, oh, <laughs> no, he's big man. He's big. He's not blue a, eyes not a, as well. Like he just doesn't look like a normal human. Yeah, so yeah good yeah. looking rooster. Yeah, <laughs> and like up in Sydney, you probably realise how big he is when up there. Like not many people knew. It's getting better. I'm sure it's getting better now. But when I first got drafted, like it was just such a rugby dominated state that um, you know we could have. 25 blokes at a pub and no one would come up to us. No one would know who we are, but he was the only exception to that. Like really? he, he would still get um, noticed everywhere he went. And that's when you sort of go, yeah, geez, you realize how big he is. Um, and then, yeah, on the field, like he was just, I played with some great players, um, but yeah, he, he did some pretty special things. <laughs> yeah. and sometimes you're like playing wing or half back, you just sit back and you're just like, wow, that's pretty amazing. Like <laughs> yeah. you sort of get caught. Just Watching? almost spectating and yeah. like getting caught up in you. You're just like, far out. That's crazy. And, Fuck. um, but yeah, like you walk a bit taller when you run out of the I race and you have someone like him, especially when he was in his prime. Like it's just, yeah, he was, it was pretty amazing. It's pretty, I think it's something in 20, 10, 15, 20 years. Like when I've got kids, I can say, like, yeah, I'll play with him. Like yeah. that, that'll be, I'll probably appreciate it more then. Bloody oath. Uh, because I mean, he's as big as, 
forward as we've had in the game for the last 20, 30 years mm. when you think about it. Um, what, what is there, I don't want to go too buddy crazy, but is there a moment that stands out for you, like on the field? I know for, I, our listeners love hearing stuff like oh. this, but is there anything that kind of like you're like, I can hell. I mean, with Buddy, it's kind of every week he does something like that. Yeah. Well, back then anyway, he was definitely doing yeah. it every week. So Yeah, it felt like he was doing it every week. Um, I don't know. I, the one, there's one moment when he I don't know, it was against the Giants and it was close in the last quarter and he marked it like, I don't know, 45, 50 out, like right on the junction on his wrong side for him. And I just remember him kicking it and I was just like, wow, like <laughs> I reckon 1% of AFL players could have kicked that. And like it was just clutch and it was just like, shit, that is, that is amazing. Yeah. So, yeah. But there was plenty, there was plenty of moments. But um, yeah, he, he was, he was pretty cool to play with and you knew when he was on, like mm. you could just get a feeling that he was going to take over. Yeah. What, Ed, what was um, horse like John Longmire? It was his kind of, from the outside, he seems like a good character quite funny yeah. and got a good connection with their sort of playing group. But what was he sort of actually like when it, when it came to footy and coaching? Yeah. Oh, he was pretty strong in his values and, um, yeah, he's was pretty seen in the box. Like he can, he can get yeah, pretty fiery yeah. at times and, um, yeah, he can, he can, he could give some sprays. That's for sure. <laughs> um, but yeah, he held really high standards and if you didn't meet those, then, um, yeah, he, he wasn't happy. Yeah. Um, and so I, especially in my first few years, I, I, Definitely didn't do things the right way and um, was a bit of a larrikin and a lad and loved going out and mm. getting on the piss a bit too much than I should have. And, and so, um, which yeah, you I, love. I, I was on, yeah, <laughs> that's which, the last um, love, though. No, nah, God, no, you realize pretty quick. So, yeah, I was on the end of a couple of sprays from him, but rightly so. And, um, I look back now and be like, yeah, he, he was, he was spot on and he probably saw something in me that, that I didn't realize. And, but did he put you on blast in front of everyone or just nah, like one-on-one? Just on like one he just challenged you if you didn't think you were doing the right thing and living that's the good. standards and that's what good high quality professionals do. And, yeah. Um, that's, there's a reason he's been there for so long because he holds people to those standards and, um, yeah, that's, that's why he's been there and they've been successful for a long time. So I think his record speaks for itself. Yeah, how many games did you end up playing for Sydney? I played 31. 31. Yeah, so, so you didn't play, yeah, you put this is, so this led to my next, what, what prompted the change? Was it because you just wanted to play, you felt like you wanted a change in general, you wanted to come back to Melbourne or play um, every week? Like what was the? Yeah, there was a few things. I think um, it was my fourth year at the Swans, I think. Um, I was getting towards the end of the year. I didn't really have a contract. So um, that probably prompted me to look elsewhere. Look and just because I, it was probably a necessity that I wanted to make sure I still in a job mm. um and then yeah so carlton as i said mick Gresta, who was the recruiting was a recruiter at sydney had gone to carlton and um they showed a little bit of interest and had a couple of interests from some melbourne clubs and um yeah it's one of those things that i felt like i didn't really have a contract there from sydney at the time um so i sort of was half preparing myself that i don't it's know if i was going to get delisted or get offered a contract I didn't know I'd played the last 10 games of the year I think and played in a final um and then yeah Carlton showed a bit of interest and coming back home was sort of half appealing but yeah I think the, the main thing was um just being able to have a fresh start I think mm. um I'd had four years at Sydney and I, I was liked but I definitely don't think I was respected in terms of how I went about it and, mm -hmm. um who I was and um always had sort of ambitions to be like a a bit more of a leader around the club and I thought, yeah, going to Carlton, it, it was a young club at um, a stage where they were struggling a fair bit and that was sort of appealing in its own right, being able to potentially have a clean slate, um, fresh canvas and, and be able to build something from from the ground up and, and um, yeah, just they had no preconceived ideas of who I was or what I was like and um, I could be whoever I wanted to be. and um, Yeah, so I thought it was, a, it was a good opportunity to do that. No, we've, I don't think we've ever had anyone I'm from Carlton, but I asked this with Collingwood players and I, I probably put Carlton in the same category, but do you realise how big the, the footy club was until you've walked through sort of the doors and started playing for them and realise how many members they have and, yeah. you know, cut, people seem to care a bit more about what Carlton do and yeah. then, you know, other clubs type thing. Did, did that sort of, was that a reality shock? Yeah, it was a, a reality shock. I didn't, I knew they were a big club and I knew footy was big in Melbourne growing up here. Um but when you're actually in it and the current thrust of the footy world and the environment. Um, and my first year, as I said, um, the coach got sacked round seven. Um, so we, we struggled early on and like rocking up to the club and having cameras 
in your face as you're yeah. walking into the chip. Like I'd never experienced that. Like that doesn't really happen at Sydney unless yeah. it's like Coach a never huge gets story. <laughs> yeah, well, like, correct. There weren't enough stories at, at Sydney. So, um, yeah, even stuff like that, I was just like, geez, this is pretty full on. Um, and the, the fans, like how passionate they are and it's like, it's amazing. But when you go on poorly, like it's pretty hard at times. Like, yeah. You, you, yeah. Some fans can get personal at times. <laughs> and like, they should get us just the game, but um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, they're they're passionate and like now we're going okay. Like it's pretty amazing to see how passionate they are and they deserve some success. The fans, but yeah, it's it's um yeah, it's a bloody big club and I think um hopefully as we keep having success, we'll, we'll see it grow even more. Yeah, absolutely. I do want to kind of go into this year a little bit. Um, Oh, in regards to Michael Voss, Voss, he was there last year, obviously, yeah. wasn't he? So, because um, I love watching him as a player, he seemed like obviously the everyone knows what he was like, but definitely like ferocious and mm. all those sort of non-negotiables outside of his great footy ability, he just ticked the boxes on. Yeah. What's what's he like as a footy coach? Um, oh, I think he is all of that as, as a footy coach, um, as he was a player. I think that's probably naturally ingrained in him, um, that competitiveness and and he wants us to play hard and tough footy because that's what he did and that's what he was like. And, um, yeah, like uh, he's been awesome for me and awesome for the footy club. But um, I think probably the side that people don't see is um, how compassionate and caring he is. And, um, yeah, we don't get that side. Like, yeah. No fan gets to really see yeah. that stuff, which yeah. I think you have to be at that level now, don't you? You have to have some sort of empathy with players yep. and connection. Yeah, you have to, like um, – yeah, I think, you know, footy players deal with lots of different things in their life and you have to have some sort of, yeah, as I said, empathy and compassion. And I think he gets the, the balance right of that, of of giving that when it's needed. But at the same time, if, um, you know, you're just not meeting standards, he, he'll be really hard and challenge you on that. And, um, I think um, the amount of delegation he does and allowing his assistant coaches to have the freedom to, to run meetings and stuff is amazing as well. So then when he does speak his voice has a lot of power and um yeah he's been awesome for me personally even as i said with some of the coaching stuff that i'd like to do post career he's been great in, in giving me some advice and that's awesome um, yeah and doing stuff outside of not just playing um so i think he sees you know us as people not just players which is um yeah it's pretty cool so yeah i think i think he'll be there for a long time and yeah, yeah. I I reckon he was licking his lips when he got the Carlton job in regards to like you just you mentioned the list you guys have is pretty is pretty awesome. And I mean it's exciting for Carlton fans, but um obviously I just want to focus in on Paddy Cripps because I for me with with Paddy Cripps, I, I think probably the first time I saw him in person, I didn't realise how tall he was. Yeah. Like as a midfielder. Yeah. Like he's a he's a beast. Mm. Um and then obviously he's, then I real when I watch him play footy and he's just so tough and he's quick and agile, like he's just got everything. What's what's it been like, sort of, with his leadership and sort of that changeover from from Doherty and so forth in regards to how he's gone about it and how he's influenced the group? Yeah, he's been amazing. Um, I think said he, he was co-captain with Doc and he was a great leader then, but I think um, his growth in the last couple of years as a leader has been pretty amazing. And um, yeah, I can't think of anyone better to, to lead this footy club. I think by actions, but also the way he goes about it on a day to day basis. And um, he's so invested in the footy club. Like uh, he's been there for his whole, obviously his whole career. So I think it's eight or nine years. Yes. He hasn't played a final. So wow. um, yeah, he's he's care for the footy club and how invested he is to get Carlton back to where he thinks it should be. He's um, yeah, second and none. And he's a pretty easy bloke to follow out the race when you see the way he goes about yeah, it. Yeah, um, He's a big man. He plays big. Um, he leads from the front. But, um, yeah, he's and he's just a great bloke. Like, anyone that meets him, like, it's um, it's not false, any of the stuff he puts on. Like, he's genuinely just a good fella. He's a guy that grew up in the country. Like, he loves being able to still just have a beer at the right time with his mates. And I think that's why he's such a good leader is that yeah. – if you're the 45th bloke on the list as an 18 year old, he can still just sit there and have a chat with them and just be a person. And I think that's, that's, his, that's his strength in the leader. Yeah. yeah. So like he can connect with anyone. So, um, yeah, he's been doing a bloody great job. Yeah. I love him. I think he's a superstar. Yeah. Oh, he's, hard, he's hard not to like. Yeah. I, I think, think, I think, I think it's probably that like, cause yeah. he's so good when you get, when you get someone so talented at sport that 
doesn't seem to care that they're that good in a sense of like how they communicate with people. Yeah. You just naturally like him. Oh, he's, like, you know he's, as humble, he's as humble as- Yeah, that he seems like as yeah. humble as anything, which like, it's it's good to hear that because- it's, it's a pretty good trait to have. Like, yeah. After winning a brown though, like- <laughs> Not that you could excuse guys, but oh mate, I'd be bo- some guys. I'd be making people yeah. pay my bets. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm a fucking yeah. brown low medalist, yeah. you little punk. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't. He doesn't have that at the. No, he doesn't. He doesn't have that. Oh no. well, he can maybe, work. maybe Jack Carroll <laughs> yeah. cleans his boots. Shout out to Jack oh, Carroll. There you go. All right, he's his son, pretty much. Do you get do you get some young guys that like when they come in, they just want to be like best mates with like Paddy Cripps yeah. and. And like Sam Doherty and stuff, they just try and rub shoulders with it. <laughs> nah, I can think of him just looking at him like, because I always think when you're a young kid and you go into a dressing room, you're always looking at the guys that you were like, they, you had their poster on your wall kind of, like who who are they? Yeah. Like imagine me a few sort of brown nosing with, with some of them. Yeah, uh, maybe. I think they do a pretty good job of hiding it if that's true. Um, <laughs> no, I, you don't I mean, want to pot anyone. I, I don't want to keep throwing Jack Carroll on the bus, but he's, <laughs> yes, a, he's a young kid from Perth and- um. Oh, right. Yeah, he just hangs off everywhere. Chris. So it's like they train a bit in the off season. We joke that um, Crip is Jack's old man. And um, yeah, he's a good fellow, Jack. But um, yeah, he loves Crip. Mean, anything <laughs> Crip says, he'll do. Oh, I yeah, love that. So. <laughs> I had a feeling. I mean, that's going to be around some footy clubs as well, I guess. Oh, yeah. But um, speaking of like young young talent coming through the AFL, like we're, I think the example now is like Dacos. Ashcroft, even Sheasel from North Melbourne, like these guys just come in with no fear on day one and play yeah. elite level footy, which is really exciting. But I think Sam Walsh was doing this like back when he came in and it's kind of been forgotten a little bit now maybe because of how good some of these other young guys yeah. are. Because Sam Walsh is still so young. Yeah. But just getting insight into him because he seemed like the consummate professional, super fit, runs all day, yep. like so well drilled and mm. trained, like almost like a robot. Yeah, he's he's, um, he's a superstar. Yeah, he's he's a freak. I think from the moment he walked in the door, I got there the same year as him, and um, you just knew he was something special the way he went about it. Um, I think the reason he's such a good player is the way he trains and prepares. Like he, he trains every session like it's a game. Like mm. he, he's a bit of a maniac um, in terms of how hard he pushes himself, and um, yeah, even being able to see him in rehab at the moment and the amount of work he's put in to get himself back. Um, yeah, he's, he's a pretty special talent, but he's a pretty special person as well. And um, I speak about Cripper and his humility, like, Walsh is the exact same. Like, really? Just, he was just the nicest kid you'll ever meet when he first came in. Like, he, Man, was, just, he was number one draft yeah. by a long way too oh. as well when he was coming in. Everyone was, like, talking about yeah. him for, like, 12 months. And, like, star. Like, he was a star his first year. I yeah. think he was All-Australian his second year. And, um, but you'd have no idea. Like, if you met him down the street, you'd have no idea that he was a star because he's just the most – kind gentle person you ever meet like he's just got time for everyone like mm. um like he's he's a vice captain already at his age it's and crazy. um yeah he's just a, he's just a great person and um in terms of humility he's he's right up there as well so um yeah it's pretty cool to be able to run run out alongside him but you do forget how young he is still yeah what, what how old would he be now is he 23 uh, maybe 20, yeah 22, 23, Fuck. so he's, he's, he's 10, got 15 some, years if you want. He's got some good years ahead of him. Jesus Christ. Yeah. Yeah. Um, what, do, do you, as a footy club, um, it's particularly off last year as well, because I remember you guys f- flew out of the gates last year. You guys were flying and obviously just missed finals, which I know would have hurt, but do you guys come into the year like this and set expectations and goals, or is it very much drilled like week to week as sort of the, the cliche would be in the media? Yeah, I don't want to If I was bossy, I'd be coming out, mate, if we don't make fucking top four with this list, like, do you know what I mean? But I don't know if coaches do that. Like, maybe they do internally. Yeah, I, I don't know. They they might, but they don't express that to us. Yeah, um, okay, which they, is probably Because if anyone rams it down their throats as much as being hum- humble and humility about playing week to week, it's the coaches. Yeah, um, okay. So, yeah, we're not privy to any of those conversations, they that's for sure. On it, yeah. Yeah. Um, and, y- like, it is cliche, but. Um, it's so true. Like it was an example of it last year. Like if you get too caught up in looking well, too far ahead, true. it can yeah, bite you in the point. ass. And and the thing about competition is it's just so even. Like there's no games that you walk in and and you just think you're going to win. Like if you're off by five or ten percent, like you'll get done. Um, I think we've seen that with some some teams this year already. Like North are playing some pretty good footy. Like even against us, 
um, Good Friday. Like they were, all, they were all over us for the first half, and like yeah. they got some quality players. And um, well, no one would have thought Saints would be four and zero at like, the time. Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah. you, but to make it, your point, Essendon, like Essendon, all these teams, mate. If you if you if you're off a little bit, um, yeah. You 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 get bitten. Do, in the do you think from when you first came into the system to now is that something you've seen change? Like the bottom to the top has gotten closer in a sense, or is it still sort of? I don't know. Yeah, it's not something I've thought too much about. It it does. I don't know. Maybe I'm just got a bit older and a bit wiser to it. Maybe, but yeah. it does feel like the last couple of years it's been, um, it's been pretty even, and, and you can get done no matter where teams are on the ladder, and, and we've been by that a couple of times so maybe that's why I'm a bit more I'm noticing it a little bit yeah. more because I'm on the end of it a couple of times <laughs> yeah. um, I kind of want to go into a little bit about uh, uh, just your sort of opinions on a few things around the AFL but this is what's your what's your favourite fixture to play in as a footy player um, is it one you, you'd look at the calendar you're like you know how big it's going to be how awesome it is like round one's always pretty special for us well, we get Carlton's to always start, on the, start the yeah, year off apart from the um, grand final rematch last year that and like you always know it's 80 plus thousand like it's it's pretty cool um mm. and just i think the whole build-up of pre-season and then into round one that that's it's sort of hard to look past that but i think um yeah especially the last year or two the collingwood one yeah um that's that rivalry has always been there but, but it does feel like it's you... it's really back especially after yeah what they did to us last year <laughs> so um yeah th- those t- anytime you play one of the big melbourne clubs is is pretty cool, but um, even good like the Good Friday game was pretty amazing to be a part of. Far um, right, yeah. and I'm I'm hoping we get to keep that every year because um, yeah, like that was fifty thousand at Marvel and and just being a part of the whole week and and what it meant and like we s- stood I don't know if you saw but we stood either side of the banner and um some people from the Royal Children's Hospital and staff oh, got no, to I run through the that. banner. It's incredible. And, um, it was weird because it's like you're trying to get up for a game and like. Be, pumped up and you're like let's get at him <laughs> yeah. but then like you're seeing these people and you just couldn't help but smile and just feel like yeah, how amazing that was and like to see them and the smiles on their faces running through and it's just like to be able to see them have some joy and what's a tough time for them like that was a pretty cool day to be a part of as well so um, that's one but, of the best things i think about being a professional athlete you should get to experience yeah. those types of things and give back a bit when you're sort of the everyday person you're still you're actually a little bit blind to mm some of the harsh realities of what people go through because yeah. you're so caught up in your own world. But Yeah, I and mean, footy's the same. You can get caught up in it um, sometimes. And, um, yeah, so to be able to give back and, and put some smiles on faces and we're in a privileged position to be able to do that is um, – that's a definitely a cool part of the job. And, um, yeah, we got to experience that um, firsthand Good Friday game, so it was pretty cool. Yeah. Now, this this always one this one always flies on clips. I always ask this, but um, who's been your – would you say your toughest opponent individual or one that's it just like for you up close, you're like, like he's, in, he's impressive. Um, oh, in terms of who I've actually had to play in, it's, it's Toby Green for ah, sure. Toby. Um, yeah, I played on him a few times the last couple of years and, um, yeah, he, he's, I played on Dusty a little bit this year. Um, yeah, he, he's pretty tough as well, but, yeah. um, yeah, to, Toby's just like, what what is it about him? Because oh, he, he can just seems, do everything. Like yeah, he seems like a freak. Sometimes you f- you play on players, and you might play on a small forward, and you're like, "Yep, it's all right." If the ball comes up in the air, like I've got him in an aerial contest, like I, I'm not going to probably get out marked by one of the small forwards. So you just got to be really wary about him on the ground, um, and then vice versa. If I'm on a taller bloke, it's just like, yeah, I feel like I might have him on the ground, but aerial is when I got to be on. Mm. But Toby just does everything well. Like I think he's only one eighty two or one eighty three or something. So he's not um, overly tall, but he he can mark it so well above his head, and he lump, uh, jumps and takes pack marks. And then um, he's great on the lead. Um, he's great at ground level. Like he just does everything well. So you sort of never really feel like you get a, a, a break on him or mm. a rest, or feel like you've you've got him in a certain area of the, of the game. So um, yeah, he, he's been my toughest player I've played. And I played on him a few times, and yeah, he's um, he said yeah, one day. He, he embarrassed me. I think he kicked four. He kicked he's embarrassing a, he kicked most the barrel this year. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he's, he's he's doing well. So um, yeah, he kicked the barrel from about sixty five out on the court. Oh, that hurts. A siren. That I thought hurts. it's going to be a tough day today when he was doing that. Um, yeah, and then yeah, like in terms of other guys, like some of the big key forwards. I don't obviously play on them, but yeah, seeing them up close. And, yeah, that'd be, that'd be pretty awesome. Yeah, they do some pretty special things, and um, 
I'm not envious of big waiters back there, one out at times against, <laughs> you know, stars of the competition. It's just yeah. like it's pretty scary. Jeremy Cameron, like round two, he had 25 and kicked six against yeah. us. And, That's um, right. I wasn't on him just to like, find that. <laughs> but, um, yeah. Yeah, yeah, that was pretty special. Like he single-handedly kept him in the game. And he's a superstar. I mean, he's, he's arguably the best player in the I think I think he is. Mm. I, we, we spe- I was speaking about this the other day to someone. Mm. I think he's, he does, fuck, he's the most damaging yeah, I think we'll kick eight every week yeah, if you wanted to. Like, yeah, I think just his ability to hit the scoreboard and he's a freak. Like, he doesn't come off either. I think, like, a lot of people probably wouldn't know, but like, the game before we played him round one, he didn't come off at all. Um, <laughs> round two, I think he came off just for a blood rule for two seconds. And then against us, I don't think he really came off either. And so he's aerobically a beast as well. So he just runs up and gets up to stoppage and then just rips back and he can do everything. And he just. If every time he marks the outside 50, you just feel like he's oh, banging yeah, at home. Yeah, he's not even looking back. Nah. He's just going walking yeah. to his mark, which yeah, scares so, me. Yeah, yeah. He's, um, <laughs> already started the season well. So. I know. He's just super star. Well, he's gonna, they, they need him because he's they yeah. started a bit slow, John, which is also a bit scary. When a team that yeah. good starts that slow, you know, like, when it, when is it going to flick? Yeah, well, we've, we've played yeah. him already. Yeah, you got him out I wouldn't way. want to play him in the next few weeks. Nah, uh, definitely back not. Back the year. Um, just a couple more to round it out, but if, if, uh, 40, 50 meters out, kicking the goal to save your life, who in the Carlton footy club are you having to kick it, taking oh, the set shot? 40 or 50 out. Yeah. Wouldn't be Matt Owies cause he wouldn't make the distance. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, that's a tough one. Maybe a bit of a left field one is Doc, Sam Doherty. Right. Yeah. He's, he's banged some pretty good goals. Home he's having 50. a ripping season. Too yeah, as well. he is. Doc. Um, yeah, he, he's he's pretty good from long range. So, um, and being a defender, I'll put my faith in him. Yeah, all right. he'll look I after like me. It. I, hope. I like it. I hope. Not, right. not one of the forwards. Oh, this is this is a regular question on this podcast. I reckon I'll know the answer because you've, you've used the word before in the podcast. But we test three successful traits to people in sport or business. All three are important, but just the one that resonates with you and your journey the most out of resilience, drive, and ambition. Which one? Oh yeah. I've already, I've already touched I mean, after on that. Yeah. After the car crash, and then the <laughs> you got to have some resilience. Yeah, some resilience oh, man, I, I don't think I had, could have had a worse start to Sydney. I think <laughs> I, I tore my meniscus the night before that I got drafted as well, oh. and I didn't tell them. So um, yeah. <laughs> I got up. <laughs> they drafted human. me as a rookie, and then I rang my manager, and then I rang him back two minutes later saying, "Yeah, well, thanks again for drafting me, but I've actually I'm on crutches." Oh, and I went man. up there. I didn't play for my first four or five months. So. Um, yeah, I think without resilience, so I don't know if I'd still be here. So that's definitely the word for me. Um, yeah, you deal with lots of ups and downs in footy and, and life, really. Um, Absolutely. And if you don't have resilience to be able to push through some hard times, you're not going to get to get to the other end. So. Yeah, that's a pretty pretty simple, easy one for me. Oh, mate, I absolutely love your journey. Obviously, it's it's a bit unique, but I think also it shows a lot of character about you. And it's great to see you getting some success this year as well as a footy club in, in your own games. So, mate, appreciate you coming on the show and good luck for the rest of the year. No worries, mate. Thanks a lot. Thanks for the go. chat. We've got a Carlton bloke on. Beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, everyone. We'll see you next week.